Hi, welcome back to Author Journey. Today we are going to talk about something extremely important, and uh, that is, um, can I really write a book? Um, something that I always run into when I either talk to new people and I'm getting to know them, they ask me what I'm doing, or uh, when I talk to people from my past that I run into, you know, they find out that, that I'm writing books and I'm publishing them, that I'm an author and pursuing this dream that I've had for quite a long time. And uh, they're very excited for me. They, you know, the first thing they say is, wow, that's amazing. I love that. And then the second thing they say is, I wish I could do that because I've always wanted to write a book. It, is, it amazes me how many people have always wanted to write a book, either, either just because they have a story inside of them or an idea that they've always thought would be very cool to explore, or because they've had life experiences that taught them so much that they want to help others through depression, through self-help, uh, through you know any, any sexual abuse or physical abuse or, or maybe um, addictions that they want to help people with. So everybody has something that they have experienced or learned that has given them growth and they can either use fiction as a platform to share that or nonfiction. And I find it very fascinating that so many people have a story within that they want to get out. They just don't believe that that, that option is accessible to them. Um, and, and I was the same way. I assumed that in order to write and publish a book, you had to have like a master's degree in English. Like I remember asking uh, my good friend Jennifer, uh, uh, don't you have to have a master's in English to you know publish when she was suggesting that I do this, that I look into this? Um, and she's like, no. <laughs> and that was news to me because I always looked at authors as people way up here who just knew so much about English and I was way down here you know the, the college student who struggled to write essays and struggled in her uh, you know high school English English courses with creative writing you know I just didn't feel like I was up to par on that so uh, I think everybody comes from uh, different backgrounds and they have different ideas on on what will qualify uh, what it takes to be an author. Um, so I think right now what I want to do is just bust some myths about that so that if you are just starting out or even if you're having like an insecure moment, because I swear authors are mo they're the most insecure people on the planet. If you're having one of those moments, I want you to, you know, look at this and recognize that, that these, these five hangups that I'm going to talk about, these five myths about, about writing or things that that prevent you from writing it, let's just go through them and get rid of all of those doubts so that we can just get right to why you should be writing and why you should get that story out and you should be helping so many people or entertaining so many people because everyone wants to hear your story um, so the first thing that I always hear when I say hey you really should you should totally write a book is oh I'm just not a good enough writer and here's the thing, nobody starts out a brilliant writer. And, and to be honest with you, every rough draft is, is called a rough draft for a reason. It's because it really stinks. It's rough. Um, now, as you become more experienced as an author, you know, hopefully those rough drafts won't be quite so bad, but it's still going to be rough. Um, and so you learn the fundamentals. You, you join a writing group and you have critique partners and you hang out with people who know more than you do. And you start to learn from them and you begin to learn the, the fundamentals of plot and structure, of creating a scene, of, you know, writing snappy dialogue, of building tension, of raising the stakes, uh, you know, of orchestration, you know, paying attention to detail, how to weave subplots and plot layers. And it all seems very overwhelming right now with me just rattling off a list of those things. But, but you just learn it line upon line and the best way to learn it is to just dive right in and start writing before you know how to write. Um, because the only way for you to receive critiques and for you to know what it is you're doing wrong and how you can fix it is by writing. So you need to write that book, you need to join a group, and you need to recognize that, that everyone will be at a different level. Everyone comes into this at a different level, but everyone, no matter what their level is, needs to know the fundamentals. And they need to have those technical writing skills um, taught to them, uh, whether through critiques or through reading books that will teach you. Um, but I, I find the best way is really through critique groups. I have always learned so much 
just by having people edit my work. And that seems so scary because you're so vulnerable. You're writing something that you're throwing out there and it's like, oh, I wrote this, this is me. And people can either praise it or critique it. And that's so frightening. But now I really crave that constructive criticism because I know that these people are going to catch things that I haven't. And they're going to be able to help me refine my process and my writing skills. And so it's a great... Um, it's a great feeling to know that people care enough to give you those critiques in the first place. It's not meant to be like an attack on you. So you can learn this and you can do this and you need to start writing despite the fact that you don't know everything. That's it's the best place to start is, is thinking that you don't know everything because that just means you can only go up from there. So that is a non-issue. It doesn't matter if you're not a good enough writer. Everybody can learn how to write well. You just have to get started. Um, so the second thing that I always hear is, um, I, I thought you had to have like a publishing deal or a publisher interested in you before you could even start writing. Now, first of all, when it comes to publishers or publishing deals, that, that's not even remotely true because an agent or a publisher, they don't want you to pitch them an idea and then go back and say, oh, well, I haven't written the book yet. So obviously you would have had to have written something. So that can't stop you from writing. Um, but, uh, Amazon and so many other stores, so many other bookstores like Barnes & Noble have provided uh, a platform and a way for us to distribute ebooks and paperback books, um, you know, in a way that has never been possible before. So we can do this by ourselves. We really can self-publish um, and, and uh, put out our own works all on our own. We don't need the approval of a, of a publisher or an agent you know, we don't have to write those query letters. You don't have to get past the gatekeepers of publishing, I guess you could say. Um, and sometimes people say, well, doesn't that mean that, that self-publishing is shoddy work? That since those people aren't saying yes and they're not weeding through all the bad stuff. Um, absolutely not. Yes, there are self-published books out there that are not of high quality because people did not take the time to write them well, did not take the time to get the editors that they needed, and they threw up a crappy cover. Sure, that happens, but that doesn't need to be you. It doesn't need to be me. That doesn't need to be you. So the important thing to remember is you absolutely can do it, and, and you build uh, your own team of people you trust to do it with. So that means critique partners. That means beta readers. That means having um, some really wonderful editors who can help you with developmental issues or can help you with line edits, with grammatical errors. It's not something you do alone, but it is definitely something you can do without the aid of a publisher or an agent. So that don't ever let that stop you because those possibilities are out there. People are publishing their own books every day, putting all of that work up there because readers want this material. They want the self-help books. They want to know, you know, what stories you have to tell. They they want the mystery books, the romance books. They want them. And uh, many times, uh, publishing, it is so subjective because you've got you've got agents who are getting tons of query letters from authors every day. And so, even though there's probably plenty of books and plenty of authors who would be wonderful to work with, they have to be very selective in what they choose. And so uh, your, your odds of being published, they're much lower, even though you probably have a wonderful, amazing, fabulous book. And so really the key is to self-publish, I think, and to make the best possible book available uh, and, and the best product that you can, whether it solves a problem, whether it entertains, uh, whether it addresses an issue that most people need to know about and have shed light on, you know, um, it needs to get, it needs to get out there. And, uh, it's a lot harder to get it out there if you're having to wait on agents who have had so many query letters mailed to them that they just don't even see your, you know, your letter. So, uh, no, don't, don't let the idea of needing a publishing contract uh, stop you from writing that book because you can absolutely publish it yourself. Um, the third thing is, okay, well, if I do self-publish it, isn't that super expensive? In the beginning, it doesn't have to be. Now, it can be depending on whether or not you want to really go crazy with your cover designer or if you decide to you know, choose a super expensive editor. Um, and then, of course, marketing books can be expensive. Um, but there are you know, ways to circumvent that, especially in the beginning. 
when I started writing, I was in a critique group of authors who were, you know, had already written and published books. And so they had a lot of knowledge and they really helped me out. And so my critique partners, they helped me edit, you know, the, the books originally. They gave me ideas. They really, uh, it was kind of a I scratch your back, you scratch my back environment where I was helping them with their material, even though at the time I didn't feel like I was super useful because I was still learning. Um, but they were still very loving and kind and taught me what I needed to know through all of the editing critiques that they gave me. And so, you know, they were my beta readers, they were my editors, and then I gave it to a lot of different eyes so that they could edit it as well, constantly polishing and fixing it, and that was all free. Um, now, there are very inexpensive editors out there who will help you, um, and you can find them on Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, and you'll find some very good editors on there. You need to be careful and make sure that, you know, their reviews are good and that they've had a lot of experience. Um, but that can be very inexpensive. Uh, and then when it comes to cover design, you can find pre-made covers um, that hopefully would fit what, whatever the theme of your book is. Uh, Nonfiction is a heck of a lot easier to do that with. And, and you can actually get online on Fiverr.com and get uh, nonfiction covers that would maybe run you 15 to $30 dollars. Um, now, fiction tends to be a little bit more expensive depending on how detailed you want to get. My first cover uh, that I ever got for the healer, which isn't the same color that, cover that I use now, it was 60 bucks. It was a pre-made cover, but it, I just want, I needed something. I needed something that stood out. I needed something that looked professional and, and good, and it did. It, it wasn't um, the best cover for my target market or even for the book, which was not something that I knew until I continued to progress in the industry. Um, but it did do its job and it did sell books and that was important. And so you don't have to start out with like a, a $500 cover. In fact, I've never paid $500 for a cover. Some people do and some people have that in their budget and that's totally fine. Um, My Fair Assassin, I work with a, a fabulous designer named Fiona Jade and she's very inexpensive when it comes to real high quality covers versus price. And so I think I spent about 200 bucks um, on each cover from her and that's actually really good compared to a lot of covers out there so you can start out with the pre-made covers you can go to people like Fiona Jade if you're into fantasy or urban fantasy she does a lot of different genres so in fact I'll, I'll put a link to her website so that that you can check her out but she's very affordable um, but as you just start out you know do the things that you can for free Find the sites that, that you can promote that will that are free because there's a lot of free promotional sites out there for books so that marketing isn't, isn't so expensive. Um, just looking for those different ways. And you can learn all of that from being in writing groups. That will help you. So no, it's not, an, it's not expensive unless you want it to be, really. Your startup costs are very low. And I recommend that you keep it that low until you begin to make money and you can reinvest back into your business. So don't let... Don't let editing costs or cover design costs or even formatting um, get you down because when you start to get connected with your critique group and your writing group, they're going to direct you to, to um, things that are inexpensive and they're going to help you with that. Um, and then the fourth, the fourth thing, are we on the fourth thing? Yes. Okay. Um, is I can't make any money from writing, so why should I spend time writing? Now, that, that obviously is a problem for people um, whose goal it is to make a living writing um, because it's not just a hobby and it's not just, oh, I'm writing and publishing a book for me and I'm getting it out there and it would be awesome to have eyes on it. You know, for them, they're wondering if they can establish a real career with it. Um, you can. It's hard, but you can. Uh, and, and it just depends on what, the way you want to go about it. If you only strictly want to write books, um, it's going to take you a while, and that is the truth. So I wouldn't say that it's impossible, because it's not, because I have made money, um, and I continue to make money publishing my books. But it's not a, a get-rich-quick scheme by any means. Um, and if you're interested in copywriting, that is, man, that's that's a great way to go if you want to make a lot of money with your writing. You know, if you enjoy writing copy, if you enjoy writing sales pages, if you enjoy writing blog posts, um, if you enjoy giving content to websites um, or, or even writing fiction for other people as a ghostwriter, you can do that too. So there are plenty of ways to make money online with your writing. Um, and there are also plenty of ways to write 
and then outsource writing and, you know, have that writing be under your name. You know, you can hire ghost writers to write books and sell those. So it's, it's really what your goals are, what your why is. Um, for those of you who, who just write to write and write to publish and write to get it out there, it's a hobby, it's fun, this probably isn't going to be a real hang-up for you. Uh, but I do want to stress that it is very possible to make money from your writing, although I wouldn't quit your day job right away, you know. <laughs> You're probably going to want to wait until you have a steady income there. Uh, but it is possible, so, so don't let that prevent you from writing either. Um, and then the, the, the fifth one, the final one that I hear quite a bit that I used myself um, is I don't have enough time. Generally, when I said I don't have enough time to write, what I meant to say was I'm too tired. <laughs> I'm too tired to write because at the end of the day after, you know, I have four children and so at the end of the day, I was way too tired. I wasn't in great shape at the time and I, and I just didn't feel like I had it in me. And when you don't feel very good health-wise or mentally or emotionally, it's very hard to focus on creating a story. Um, I think nonfiction is a little bit easier because that information is there. Um, you can research it. It's not content you have to make up. It is content you have to organize and put you know, in a way that people can, can learn and grow and, and uh, have some kind of so uh, problem solved. But with fiction and creative writing, this is this is all you making up something that is very intensive, you know, mentally and emotionally. And so for me, with, with where I was at, it wasn't necessarily that I didn't have time, even though that was the excuse I made. It was that it just wasn't a priority at that point in my life. It wasn't the season of my life where I could do it at. Um, or I was just too tired. Uh, because really, when it comes right down to it, you always have time, even if you're working two to three jobs, even if you're a single mom, even if you're a single dad, even if you're if you're not single, but you have kids in your home all day. I mean, everybody's got a story and that's what it is. You know, it's it's a story that prevents you from writing. But what it really is, is that you just haven't made it a priority. Um, and so, you know, you can take 15 minutes, you can take 30 minutes. Um, out of every day if you need to wake up 30 minutes early just to write some ideas down just to outline something that's better than nothing um, many authors make it a goal of writing anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 words a day um, if you could just get in 500 words that's a few paragraphs I think that's you know anywhere from three to four paragraphs um, get in 500 words and call it good you could certainly do that in 30 minutes um, and maybe, maybe in the beginning when your brain is kind of sluggish and you're like, oh my gosh, everything I'm writing is crap, you know, <laughs> that might be a little difficult and you'll feel like, nope, I can only do 250 words. That's okay. That's completely fine. Um, I remember just spending anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes writing scenes down. I would think of something that needed to be included in the book and I knew that I wasn't in the right frame of mind to write it, that I just couldn't make it a priority, that I was too tired. I knew that that I wasn't going to work on it, but I still would write that idea down. I would just think to myself, if I can just write down everything that should be in this book, then I can look at all of these notes, these little key points, and I can do something with it and organize it. And so, you know, tomorrow for 15 minutes, that's what I'll do. I'll just organize everything I've decided that should be in the book. Um, and then once I've done that, then I would make another goal for the next day. Okay. Next day at this time when I have 15 minutes, I'm going to take this one little note that, that I felt needed to be in, in the book. I'm just going to write a paragraph and expound on it a little bit, um, flesh it out a little more. And so I, bit by bit, I was slowly writing. And I, I mean, that it took a long time. OK, so just to just to get that book anywhere near to a rough draft, it took a good year. But that was better than just saying, oh, I don't have time and not using those 15 to 30 minute increments, you know, where I would still time um, to get something done. A, a little bit is better than absolutely nothing, whether it's 250 words, whether it's 500 words, whether your husband comes home for the weekend <laughs> and takes the kids and, and, and um, you can go and write for an hour, you know, what, whatever it is you need to do in order to to get just a little bit of time to write a little more, then do it. And, but bottom line is you do have time if you make it a priority. Um, so, so don't say I don't have time. I don't have enough time. The key is to say 
how can I have enough time? Where can I fit enough time in? Where can I schedule this? You know, where can I you know, prioritize everything I'm doing a little bit better? Do I need to wake up 20 minutes earlier and just write for 20 minutes? Um, you can always find time to do it if it's important to you. So I hope that this video has helped you uh, with some of the major myths or, or excuses, if you want to call them, or even just misguided beliefs when it comes to writing a book and whether or not you actually can do it. I hope that, that these things um, that have prevented you from writing a book won't do that anymore because you have a story, you have experience, you have important things that you need to share with the world. And every reader out there, you know, we're looking for more books. Voracious readers like us, you know, even authors are voracious readers, I think. We are always looking for more books. We're always looking for more self-help books. We're always looking for more memoirs. We're always looking for more romances. So your story is important. What you have to offer is important. And I hope that these hang-ups will, will no longer be hang-ups for you, but they'll be something that you recognize don't apply to you anymore. Um, and so I, I really hope that you write this book that you've always wanted to write. And when you do, please let me know because I will be so excited to, to find out what it is, what that story is that you finally got out there that you were able to write and able to publish. Um, so please like this video if you found that this was helpful and, and hopefully inspiring and motivational. Uh, you know, comment below if you have any other questions or any other hang-ups that have prevented you from, from actually achieving this goal of writing and publishing a book. And uh, I'll do my best to talk you through it if I can or, or write a reply. Um, and be sure to subscribe because I've got all sorts of uh, videos that will help you continue the process and your own author journey of, of writing and publishing because I want to make sure that once you start this journey, you don't stop it. You know, let's, let's push our way through and, and, and keep going so that you can achieve every single goal you have when it comes to your writing. Um, and that is pretty much it for now. So I'll talk to you guys later.